That is so good. Ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are, this is a recap of composing a ballad. This is part six, where we are talking about next steps. We started our session as we began several parts ago with a napkin diagram. We said we wanted to talk about our reflections on streaming, composing while streaming. And we said that there was an energy by feeling the presence of a third party. The first party is us as composer. The second party is the music as it's being put on paper and plays back at us. And the third party is y'all, wherever, whether you were watching this live or watching it as a recap, the simple awareness in advance that somebody else will be listening and looking and participating as a collaborative energy. We then talked about what might be the next steps in our ballad. And one we identified nuts and bolts is in the second variation, we do need to go back and tweak the melody and backbone to fit with the cadence. And we saw that because in variation three, we spent two sessions adjusting the melody and the backbone to fit with the new cadence. And we had kind of skipped over the second variation. And then in looking back at it today, we realized, yep, we need to make a change there. So that's very nuts and bolts. Then we continued our thought about next steps and made reference to the idea of energy factors in music composition and used the idea of an energy diagram and some helpful charts, which I'm going to show you. And then we went to communication beyond words. What does it mean to communicate beyond words? And then we talked about where, from the past, the ideas and for this ballad came from and what emotional and cognitive associations and did we associate with the intervals and the melodies and the movement in our ballad and acknowledging that as a past coming into composition now we're in the present where do we want to go what is our intent what is our what is the communication that's beyond words so here is the ballad variations in C full talent full tonality as they are currently constituted. Variation one. pause listening here, I ask you, fellow composers and performers, and we are all composers and performers, as we discussed in this full broadcast, where would you go next with this first variation? Good point. Yes. I hadn't thought of that. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll build on that and say that my kind of gut feeling is this is almost pretty enough as is to just post. However, if I wanted to dress it up a bit, I would tweak the melody uh, rhythm in here. Uh, I would probably dress it up by adding some ornamentation, maybe some arpeggios based on the 
the cadences. I might vary the volume, higher or lower, and uh, like that. But pretty much it's almost ready to go as is in terms of pleasant sounding and evocative. And might even add some words as a ballad. Now let's listen to the second variation, which is here. So, sirs and madams, fellow composers and performers, how would you tweak the second variation? Uh huh. Good point. Yes. Yes. Yes, definitely. If I could build on that, I would. I would add or build. Um, our learning from our most recent session was uh, to reaffirm the rule that the melody and the backbone notes must agree and that we do not want to have double notes in our backbone. And then we also hear we can't use that A, that A is not in the cadence. So we have to adjust the melody a few points in this variation and the backbone to make sure they agree with the cadence. So that's, that's kind of like our most immediate nuts and bolts next step. Building on what we uh, had, had done in the, in the third variation. So that's definitely on the, on the table. Now let's listen to the third variation. job. And in, again, let me ask, how would you tweak or where would you go next? What would next steps be that pop up for you? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, I see your point. Yes. Yes. So let's take all that and let's look at the design reference things that we added. We started here going in, what are our next steps? And we identified the obvious one in variation two. And then as we listened, and as, as we composed, We're going to, we're, we, we created some new references things, and we want to start with the idea of an energy diagram. And the idea of an energy diagram was that it's possible, if you look at things like, hmm, 
how loud is it? How complex is it? How consonant or dis dissonant is it? And, and we did this during the full broadcast. It was possible to kind of assign numbers to them and make a chart over here we call it the energy chart. And it was possible to, from the numbers, calculate the energy change and do something as interesting as uh, play the music and synchronize it with a moving video. Here we, we slow down as we come into this next phase here, and slowing down is part of the energy, uh, the tempo is part of the energy. And we kind of had to go make ourselves a diagram and say, well, what are all these energy factors in energy? And we came up with tempo, slow, fast, volume, soft, loud. Pitch, high pitch, high pitch tends to be higher energy. Low pitch can be lower energy. The consonance of two or more two or more notes played at the same time has an associated physiological tension, uh, and we like the word tension as a synonym for consonance and dissonance. Low tension is consonant. High tension is dissonant. And uh, the lower the tension, the lower the energy. The higher the tension, the higher the energy. Also, how complicated or complex is the figure? Da da or da 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 da, da, da which includes the rhythm, a simple rhythm. Da da or a da 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 da. And then cadence itself has a complexity. If you same, play the same chords, or do you alter the chords and they move from one to the other? And the chords can have a rhythmic complexity if you pay them as our, play them as an arpeggio, da 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 versus bang bang. So these are all things that we can select from in our compositional palette to go into the next steps in the ballad. And then we went from energy diagram here to communication beyond words. What, what is our intent? And we spent some time on here and, and we talked about coming from the past. And for me, the ballad has a lot of these emotional and cognitive or inspirational elements, poignant, beauty, sadness, strength, affirmation, declaration. But we're no longer in the past. We are in the present. We are all composers and performers. What is the communication and what is the intention? That, that's our question. And when we say communication beyond words, we mean that music is in some sense primal. It's the beat. It's the movement and the sound. And movement and sound came before words in our human development and music which has movement and sound as key energy factors, and also in some sense comes before words or side by side with words. And so what is the communication we're after, especially in this ballad? What sensations are we trying to communicate and perhaps what ideas? What is the, t what is the intention? And that is where we pause. Tune in next time for next steps. Thank you, sirs and madams, wherever you are, as always, for your attention, patience, and open listening in your own compositional and performing endeavors, whether they be music, whether they be prose, the whole gamut. And as always, keep on streaming.